Hi, this is Auntie Stina. Today I'm going to tell you another very interesting story. Have you ever heard of a special lady named Ellen G. White? Maybe your mom or dad have read for you from one of her many books. God really used her to write down so many things that are very helpful for us who long to go home to heaven. But her life was not always easy. I think you will learn more about it as I read today's story. It's called Longing for Heaven. Many, many years ago, two little tweens were on their way home from school. The name of the one was Elizabeth and the other was named Ellen. They came from a Christian home and their dad had told them that if other kids tried to drag them into conflict or trouble, they should just try to walk away. That was what Ellen and Elizabeth was just up to now. For some reason an older student had got really angry and instead of fighting with her, they hurried on their way home. But the girl was persistent. She picked up a stone and threw it in the direction of the girls. Shoo! It went through the air and unfortunately hit Ellen right in the face. Imagine what that would feel like, having an older girl chasing you and then being hit with a big stone in the face. That stone changed Ellen's life. She had been a very good and eager student at school and a healthy little girl. She really wanted to continue her studies and be able to play together with the other children. But for days and weeks she had to stay in bed. Oh, so sad. Her dad was out for a journey when the accident happened. And when he came home, he said hello to all his children and asked, Where's Ellen? Ellen had stood in the room all the time. But after the accident she looked so deformed in her face and so pale, thin and sick that even her own father did not recognize her. Imagine how that may have felt. If you looked so bad that your dad did not even know you were you. Maybe that was even more painful than the hit of the stone. Ellen really loved Jesus, but she went through a very hard time. Many nights she cried and prayed and felt so very hopeless. But do you think Jesus had forgotten Ellen? Oh no. Jesus showed Ellen that even though she was very weak, he is very strong. Jesus was just preparing Ellen for a very, very special work. He needed someone for this work that would not trust themselves but would trust fully in Jesus. He needed someone who would feel that this world is not their real home, someone who would long for heaven. One day, many years later, Ellen had a very special dream. In the dream, Ellen and her friends were getting ready for a long journey. Back then, they did not have cars, so they had packed their horses and their wagons with lots of things to take for the trip. The wagons were really heavy. It did not take long before the road seemed to go steeply upward. On one side of the road it was a scary cliff and on the other side it was a smooth white wall. They kept walking but the road just grew narrower and steeper. After a while the road got so narrow that they decided to leave the wagons behind. Imagine how many things they had to leave right there. They could only take a little of their stuff with them on the horses. But the road grew even narrower, so narrow that they had to press themselves closer to the wall not to fall off the cliff. They had to cast off more of their luggage and still it was really scary to ride the horses on such a narrow path. They felt like they could lose their balance any time. At such times it seemed like a hand was stretched out to help them guide the horses. You can imagine how they may have talked to each other. It's too narrow, brother. Even too narrow for the horses. Let's leave them behind and walk by foot. And so they did. They went in a single row as it was not room enough for them to walk next to each other. What a scary path. How do you think you would have felt walking it? But then something happened. Small cords came down along the white big wall. 
they had something to hold on to. The cords made it easier to hold the balance, but as the path grew even narrower, they decided to take out their socks and shoes so their bare feet could grasp the ro rocky path more easily. Many who had started out on the journey had given up already. Ellen and her friends looked around, and they could not see them anymore. Only those who were used to some real challenges dared to move forward. And the harder it got, the more eager they became. Soon there was almost no ground under their feet. But guess what? The cords that first were rather thin had got stronger and thicker, and they had to hang almost their whole weight on them. We have hauled from a bow there, they shouted. They looked down onto the cliff below. Far down there, they heard bad music, dancing, feasting and swearing, and they became even sure that they had to stay on the narrow path and not join the crowd in the valley. As Ellen looked at the white wall beside her, she could see blood on it. She understood that others had been walking before them, and if others had made it, she was sure that they, by God's grace, could make it too. Finally, they reached the place where the path ended. Before them was a big chasm, like if the road ended in a big dark hole. But on the other side of the chasm, they saw something marvelous. It was the most beautiful place they had ever seen. It had green, beautiful fields and a soft light like gold and silver. They knew this was the goal of their journey, but how could they get there? There was absolutely no road, no path. The only way would be to swing themselves across with the help of the cords that had been their help during the last part of the journey. The cords had grown strong and large, but ho who were holding them? Could they trust they would not break if they swung across? For a moment they hesitated. But then they cried, our only hope is to trust wholly in the cord. It has been our dependence all the difficult way. It will not fail us now. Then they heard the words, God holds the cords. Try to imagine yourself hanging in one of those thick cords, almost as thick as yourself, just hanging there in the air with your arms and your legs wrapped around the cord. That is really fate. To hang in the air, clinging to something, when you don't even see when it comes from. But they knew the cord had held them so far, and they decided to trust that God was holding it and just swing across the scary deep chasm. A man named James was the first to swing himself across the abyss into the beautiful field on the other side, and Ellen followed him right afterwards. She heard voices praising God in triumph. Oh, how happy she felt, perfectly happy. Ellen awoke from the dream, but she never forgot it. All her life she longed for those green, beautiful fields of heaven. She never really felt at home in this world. She had seen a better country, and all she wanted was to help as many people to get there as possible. Whatever it would cost her to get there, she was sure God would be able to carry her through. Did you enjoy the story? Yes. yes! Why do you think God allowed Ellen to experience so hard things when she was a little girl? I think Ellen went through hard times because God wanted to prepare her for harder times ahead. That could be very true, Hannah. And especially when we know her story, she actually started to experience a lot of hard things in her life. And when we experience a little when we are small, it kind of helps us to grow stronger, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Have you ever experienced something hard, Hannah, where you felt God was helping you out? Yes. Can you remember what last time we were recording? Last time it took so much time to I remember. the CD. It was very hard. But when we prayed... God helped us to finish it. Yes, and that was a very nice experience, and I'm sure he'll help us this time too. There was one more thing that was really special with Ellen. She longed so much for heaven. I guess she was experiencing so much trouble here, and she was longing for something better. 
Um, why do you think it's so much better to live in heaven than to live here on earth? And, and what do you think we can look forward to in heaven, Hannah? I think it's much better to be in heaven than to live here on earth because there will be no sin and no death. And I look forward to people having no stress and only happiness. I look forward to speaking with Jesus face to face. I have a lot of questions I would like to ask him. Yes, Anna, that will be wonderful to one day actually be able to ask him all the questions and actually hear the answers from his own mouth. Won't it be wonderful? Of course it will. There's one more thing, though, that I wanted to ask you, because remember I was reading this story about the journey to heaven, and I thought to ask you, what was a part of a story that you liked the most, John? I remember that in the story, cords fell from heaven. They were there to help the people get along the path. I think it's a good thing to know that someone cares for us in these times of trouble. What about you, Hannah? I liked the part of the story where they felt like they were just about to fall and the hand of Jesus kept them from falling. Thanks for sharing that. There's another thing that I thought about because as God's children are, you know, going towards heaven, there might be some things we also should give up. You remember in the story with the wagons they had to put behind, even even sometimes their clothes. <laughs> Could there be anything that God might ask us to put aside that we can journey towards heaven, John? Yeah, in this world there are a lot of things that can distract us, like riches or entertainment or even bad music and clothing. That's true, John. Maybe you can think of some other things too, Hannah? Yes, I can. We might have to get rid of bad influences like ungodly friends and desire to be liked by everyone. That's true, Hannah. In fact, everything that we put before our friendship to Jesus, everything that distracts us from spending time with him and his word could be things that or will be things that will hinder us from going with Jesus. I have a last question for you. Because this journey is not so easy, but how can we be safe all the way anyway? Obeying God's commands will save us really, really much trouble. If we trust in Jesus, we'll be safe all along the way. It doesn't matter how big the troubles are, he will always carry us through. That is so true. Jesus is so faithful, and as we think of him and trust his help, he is able to keep us on the narrow path. I'm thinking of a Bible verse that encourages us to be faithful to Jesus to the end. It also promises us that he will come soon. Let's sing Revelation 3.11 together. Before we end this little program, we want to share another little song with you. If we often think about how wonderful it is in heaven, it will make it easier for us to conquer the challenges on the way there. So as we say goodbye for now, we'll sing you a song called Imagine How Nice in Heaven. I went to a zoo and discovered Thank you. 
will be glad.